Hi, I'm Sherry Rita from Wilmette Public Library, and I am here to share summer storytelling with you. I have been collecting and learning stories from all over the world, and today I have a story for you that comes all the way from Africa and across the oceans and came with African Americans to the American South. And even though the African Americans who knew these stories went through horrible times, they were enslaved and they were treated horribly, they saved these stories and they passed them on to their children and their children's children so that you could laugh and so that you could learn and so that we could have even more culture in this country as we grow this country together. The story I'm sharing with you today is about Br'er Rabbit and Br'er Fox. Br'er Rabbit and Br'er Fox are sort of like what some people call frenemies, right? They don't get along very well. They live in the same area. They kind of tolerate each other but they get mad at each other too. They have sort of a cat and mouse game going, only it's fox and rabbit. Br'er Fox plays a lot of tricks on Br'er Rabbit. And one day, Br'er Fox had had enough. He had up really, really early that day because he was up to no good. He got up before Sister Moon had even come inside. And he made himself a little baby out of tar. A little model, perfect model of a baby out of tar. Sticky, smelly tar. And he put that baby in the middle of the path where he knew Br'er Rabbit passed by every day. And he went into the bushes and he waited. Sure enough, here come Br'er Rabbit, right? Hopping down the path. And he sees this little baby, he thinks. And he says, how do you do? It's a good day. Of course, it's always a good day as long as you're alive. And he laughed at his own joke. And he waited for the baby to laugh with him and nothing happened. Ain't nobody taught you manners, he said. You respond when a grown-up says hello. Baby says nothing. Red Rabbit says, I said hello. Baby says nothing. Red Rabbit got offended. He got really mad. And he said, well, I'm going to teach you manners. And he tried to slap the baby made of tar. But you know how tar is. Remember? really sticky and his hand stuck to that tar baby. He said, let me go. Let me go, you fresh little thing. And he tried to slap him again. And his other hand got stuck. He says, you terrible fresh little thing. You let me go. What kind of tricks are you playing here? And he kicked at the tar baby and his foot got stuck. <laughs> so then he thought maybe he wouldn't fight no more, but he'd try and, and squish his foot free. And he put his other foot up by the first foot and it stuck too. And Br'er Rabbit was so mad. He tried to head bump that baby and his head got stuck. He was all stuck up to that thing. So Fox thought maybe it was time to show himself. Br'er Fox came sauntering out of the bushes, just as cool as the sweat on a bottle of pop. Well, Br'er Rabbit, he said, looks like you found out where anger gets you. Br'er Rabbit says, oh, hey, Br'er Fox, I'm kind of stuck here. You think you can, you think you can help me get free? Br'er Fox says, are you kidding me? Looks to me like I know who's having rabbit for supper. 
Brer Rabbit's eyes got wide. And he said, Oh, come on, come on, Brer Fox. You don't need no rabbit for supper. And, Ra and, and Brer Fox said, Oh, I think you're about ripe for a delicious barbecue. Yeah, that's what you need. You need some barbecuing. And Brer Rabbit sat there a minute, overwhelmed with fear, and then he hid the fear on his face. And he said, Oh, I don't want to be barbecued. I sure don't want to be barbecued, Brer Fox, but at least you're not throwing me into the briar patch. Brer Fox got kind of confused by this. He wanted to scare Brer Rabbit. He wanted Brer Rabbit to imagine the worst thing ever. So he said, well, yeah, you know, it's maybe it's kind of hot for barbecuing. Yeah, I don't want to start a fire and all that. I think I'll hang you. And Br'er Fox said, oh, hanging would be bad, Br'er Rabbit. I don't want to be hanged. But I got to thank you because at least you won't be throwing me into the briar patch. Br'er Fox was not happy with this reply. He wanted to scare that rabbit. That rascally rabbit. And so he said, yeah, Darn it, I don't have any rope. I'm not going to barbecue. I'm not going to hang you. Maybe I ought to drown you. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'm going to drown you in the river. And Br'er Rabbit said, Oh, I don't want to be drowned. I don't want to go in that river. You know how I hate water. But if you got to drown me, I got to thank you because at least you're not throwing me into the briar patch. Well, now Br'er Fox felt he knew for sure that the worst thing that could happen to Br'er Rabbit was to be thrown into the briar patch. And so he said, you know, I don't feel like getting wet today. I'm not going to drown you neither. And he grabbed Br'er Rabbit and he tore him loose from that hunk of tar. And he whipped him around like Cy Young getting ready to pitch a great pitch. And he threw that rabbit into the briar patch. And he waited for cries, and he waited for his fear. But instead he heard, poof, poof, poof. <laughs> and Br'er Rabbit jumped up and said, I was born and raised in the briar patch, Br'er Fox. I know the briar patch. It's where I was born and raised. And he hopped off deeper into the briar patch. And Br'er Fox was fooled again. There's lots and lots of stories about Br'er Fox and Br'er Rabbit. The best ones, I think, are the ones by Jerry Pinkney. We have those in the library. I hope you enjoy as many of them as you can find. And then next week, I'll bring you some more stories. Take care, kids.